So you should be able to see a doc, paper doc here on the right side that says uh, Lunchbox Explorer and Mapbox APIs, and then we're going to dive into code editor a little bit later. We're good? Looking good. Okay, terrific. All right, well, thank you all very much for joining. I'm very excited to um, share some of these, these, um, these tips and, and, and information around the Mapbox APIs. And really, the main thing that I would like to do today is take a little bit of a different approach of how we approach to learning uh, Mapbox APIs, because there are, our tools are a bit like Lego, so they can be mixed and matched to build specific solutions. And some of these can be um, used to, to build pretty sophisticated very sophisticated application. So what we want to do is sort of take a comparative approach and, and sort of look at the 3,000 foot view and get a sense for what are all the APIs and how can somebody who doesn't necessarily have uh, knowledge of Mapbox or maybe is even new to technology, how can somebody uh, really get a sense of where to get started, how to get started, uh, and then build uh, your own application or prototype um, or really any, anything else that's um, important to you. So our objective today will be to take this comparative approach. Uh, We're going Eric, to build, yes. We've got questions already. One, All right, the text fantastic. on your screen is so small. Can you bump it up? And two, Absolutely. Can, I create, can I create this as a Google Doc and share it with everybody on the chat? Is that all right with you if I just copy and paste? Yeah, 100%. I think all right, yeah, cool. Absolutely. You go ahead and I'll share that in the chat in just a minute. Okay, terrific. And uh, how is the font now? Is it better? All right, so uh, once we, we take a look at the APIs, we're going to dive into building a, essentially a, um, a playground for the Directions API so that we can get a sense of uh, how to build with one of the more complex APIs, um, but we'll walk away realizing that, you know, it's really not, not as complex as it seems and, and anybody can build with Mapbox. So diving in, uh, Let's start with what is an API? An API is a way that two systems can exchange information. And the information is typically represented in some predetermined format. And that format can be in different, uh, different types. You could have JSON data that's being sent, uh, retrieved, you could have XML, uh, there could be a file, like an image file, and we'll dive into some of these different types. But in essence, for the scope of this conversation, we can think of an API really just like a URL. So the same way that you would go to a website to look at information that you want to read or, or access with an API, you have a system that programmatically makes that what we call API call and it goes to that URL to then retrieve information that the rest of the program can then use. So here we have a sample Mapbox API request and there are different components to the API, and we'll dive into those in just a second. But just to get a flavor for what an API is, does, and how we can run it, I'm just going to open up a new tab and essentially just putting in the API call, which is this URL, I'm able to retrieve specific uh, information. In this case, we are making a directions call. Uh, and there's some other parameters that we'll dive into a little bit more um, in a moment. But let's take a look and see what does this API call really mean. So I love color. I love color coding. I think it's, very, it's a good way to figure out how to uh, put different pieces together, or how things relate uh, to one another. So if we take a, 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 if we sort of break down this API call into different segments, uh, this is a way that we can start to see the different patterns of the, of the API. So for example, um, to begin with, there is the base path. So this is where we go to access really any of the APIs. In this case, we're going to api.mapbox.com. Um, there is also an offline offering called Atlas. So if you were to use Atlas and not necessarily use the cloud APIs, then you would go to that specific instance. Um, once you, you choose the base path where you're going, then you're going to choose which endpoint you want to access. And so there's gonna be different endpoints, one for directions, one for isochrone, for matching, for search, for maps, etc. Um, and so we want to be very specific in terms of what is the type of data that we're trying to access. And along with that, typically APIs will have different versions. So in this case, we're looking at um, directions version five. Now for the uh, required parameters, so the API is going to have different, um, different parameters. At a minimum, it's going to need, in this case, uh, a couple of coordinates, a couple of coordinate sets, and then the profile so that we can return at least a viable route. 
But because a lot of the needs of somebody using these APIs can be very specific, um, we add a lot of parameters to basically being able to make these requests as specific as you need them, whether you want to retrieve directions for driving or cycling um, or walking, or if you're driving, for example, do you want the route to arrive at the destination curbside versus not? So these are all things that you can uh, set as part of the API call. And then of course, in order to authenticate um, and, and make sure that the, the API call is being legitimately made and going back to your application so that you can access the data securely, et cetera, uh, that uh, the API call requires a scope, uh, excuse me, a token, um, which is gonna have its own defined scope. So if I move this here, I already had an API call just like we did before, but I'll click on it here. You can see, again, it's literally just a link and, and we're able to access this data. Okay, if you, um, later on, because we're gonna need a, a token, so if you haven't already and you want to um, try out and sign up for uh, Mapbox, you can go to mapbox.com. Uh, you can sign up for a free account uh, and then you're able to go and create a token which we'll be using uh, later on. So you can do that now or later, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this comparative approach. What does it mean? Well, if you're new to APIs, um, whether they're Mapbox or in general, um, you can start by going to the Mapbox API documentation, um, which is very, very good, very detailed. Um, as you, I'm just gonna scroll up here for a second and zoom in. There are different services that you see. So APIs are categorized by specific um, areas or services. So one is maps, navigation, search. Um, and as you dive into the documentation, you can see, so for example, if I click a, if I choose the raster tiles API, you get all the information you need from the structure of the API call, the required parameters, errors, et cetera. And this is a great way to dive in. But for this session, what I want to do is, let's take the same approach of kind of color coding our API call and apply that to all or most of the, uh, uh, of the Mapbox APIs and see what are some of the similarities and differences so that as we approach this in a new way uh, or, or as we approach it and we never approached it before, then we can quickly get a sense um, of what APIs do and orient ourselves. So you hey, can Eric. see the frame, yes. Chiming in here, we have a question Please. from the chat um, yeah. asking if there is an API spec available somewhere, open API v3 or older. Um, want to chime in on that? Yeah, that's great. Um, I don't know exactly where that is, but I can, I'd be happy to follow up after, after the session. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Okay, terrific. So, uh, diving into the APIs here, uh, we see that basically they all follow the same, um, construction. So they, they use our just gonna scroll up here for a second. These are base path, our endpoint, uh, our required parameters, and our token. The required and the optional parameters along with the endpoint are the things that really ultimately change. So for example, you can see that for retrieving vector tiles, we're going to access a specific style, we're going to access specific zoom and um, specific at X, Y coordinates for the tiles. If we, <clears throat> excuse me, if we retrieve um, static images, which is a different API, instead of returning the actual tiles of the map, these return a specific image that you have set up and considered like a view into the map with specific camera angle and zoom, et cetera. So this is going to have different parameters. And all of these will return different uh, results. So for example, I'm gonna scroll around here for a second. And I zoomed in a little bit. I'm just gonna zoom out just for a second, just in terms of this table can be a little wide. Uh, if you all just bear with me, there we go, we can try that. Okay. So for example, if we want to retrieve a, a vector tile, um, you can click here, you're actually getting the vector tile file. This is an encoded file encoding protobuf. I'll show you a sample here in a moment. Um, but if we were to do the same thing, for example, for a raster tile, which we know is just an image, when I click there, then I get the actual image. So these are a couple of different uh, API calls. Uh, with static tiles, you can take the same 
vector um, vector tile maps that you custom designed, and then you can turn them into raster tiles so that they are accessible just as images. And there's you know different pros and cons depending on the type of implementation that you have, which one you want to use. You notice here with the static images that it's a little different. It's not quite a, a specific predetermined uh, tile, but it's an actual view so that you can set a pitch angle, you can set all the different parameters, you can even overlay information. So if you had a route line or a polygon, something that you want to, um, to add to the map, but keep it style so that it doesn't have a lot of inter interactivity, you can definitely do that with the static images. And these are very good, for example, if you want to embed a map in a receipt um, or somewhere where you don't need interactivity on the spot, but then they could click and then you could have functionality to lead to an interactive map. So just moving along a little bit, and I know that Dom is sharing the doc, so anybody can kind of dive in and, and try a couple of different things here. But, um, and by the way, if you have questions, definitely happy to go back. Um, but we can also start to take a look. We, we talked a little bit about uh, directions. Uh, so I'm gonna skip that for a second. I'm gonna talk about isochrones. So isochrones uh, is a totally different API. And this is just to give you a sense of the, of, of the breadth and the, of the response you get. So here, basically, I, I, if you think of an isochrone, an isochrone is a way to determine travel time 360 degrees from a specific point. Uh, so what we return here are really the coordinates for all the um, uh, polygons, all the areas that can be reached from that point. So there's really nothing too visual until we take this data and we use it on the map. Moving on down to uh, search, and search is a, is a very straightforward API. So we either do forward geocoding, where we have we enter an address, a text query essentially, and then we try to match that with lat longs, or we do, we do reverse geocoding, which is where you may have a lat long, for example, say of a uh, ride sharing vehicle, and you need to determine where, the, where that vehicle is on the map, and then you can essentially um, get the coordinates and put them back on the map and have maybe a, a, a um, information about an address that's nearby, et cetera. Uh, this, this, res this response type is, uh, is basically, it's GeoJSON. So we're starting to see some patterns here as we look at, across the different APIs where we have different types of responses. So predominantly across uh, Mapbox APIs, you can retrieve data that are basically vector tiles. And here's the sample of the, um, encoded protobuf that, that I was, um, was mentioning earlier. There are image files that can be returned, whether it's a static image or uh, static tiles, raster tiles. Um, there are JSON responses, and these are typically used for more complex objects like a route object where you have a lot of information that goes beyond just geographical information. And then for things that are pretty straightforward and can just be used uh, straight up with a, say, a Mapbox source to attach to a map, then um, we can return the data directly in GeoJSON. And so this is for, for example, for our search API. For each of these APIs, as I mentioned, uh, there are different uh, required parameters. So it's really a matter of figuring out based on the call that you want to make, which parameters you want to use um, to make that call and get the data that you need. If we were to look at every single API that we just um, covered, you can see basically this is the type of information that you can expect. So every time you're calling that, uh, let's call it URL for the uh, purpose of this conversation, um, you can expect, for example, to get GeoJSON if you happen to use Tile Query, uh, JSON if you happen to use Directions, GeoJSON if you happen to use Isochrone, um, JPEG if you happen to use Static Tiles, et cetera. In the case of uh, APIs that use uh, the return images. You also have parameters where we can specify, for example, the fidelity of that image so that if you are uh, working, and by fidelity I mean like the resolution so that if you are working in a low bandwidth environment, uh, you have options there as well. Okay, so that is a super quick overview, kind of diving into the different APIs, understanding what they do, how they can be used. Um, the next section is going to can take what we learned and then start to take a look at the directions API and then build some um, build an example with that. Uh, any questions before we move forward? We have one that is asking, do we have any APIs that allow for a vector output? 
for vector output in terms of vector tau output, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Let me see. They follow up. Any kind. Sure, any kind. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so this first API here, so this is how you could retrieve a vector um, a tile. And this is the vector tile right here, this MVT file down here in the bottom. Now, typically these get consumed, are consumed uh, by our render. So really in most scenarios, uh, RSDK, if you're using Mapbox SDK, these will interact directly with uh, the APIs because we want to make this super easy so that with just a couple lines of code, you can build what you need. So in the case, for example, for the vector tiles, the minute that you instantiate the map and you're panning and zooming, all that is handled for you. Um, but if you ever needed for some reason to have a unique implementation where you need to go directly to these APIs, then this gives you the options to uh, the option to do that. So at that point you can call the API, take the response, you can parse the response, deserialize it, render it, do, do whatever you need to do. Does that answer your question? Looking like it is. Someone also said GeoJSON could be considered a vector format too once you put okay. it on a map. Okay, excellent. Um, so going back to what we learned earlier about the directions API. So we know this is going to be uh, the API call to retrieve directions. Uh, we know that we have a lot of options in terms of required parameters and optional parameters. So if you, just to go through a couple for, to give a ready flavor of what you can do with the directions API, uh, with alternatives, you can choose whether you want to return alternative routes uh, along with the primary one, with annotations, whether you want to return specific information about um, um, speed, for example, or anything else that has to do with the segments of the route. Um, bearing, bearing information along the route. Um, you can exclude specific um, specific parts of the route. So for example, tolls, um, you can choose to exclude those. Um, and there's really a lot more. So geometries, you can choose whether you want raw coordinates or whether you want an encoded polyline, um, approaches how you want to approach upon arrival on the side of the road. Um, so this really gives you a lot of opportunity to build um, exactly, to make the exact request that you need. But this is, um, this is a lot of um, sort of introductory, introductory theory, but let's start to build with it and kind of get a flavor for what this does. So I'm going to so we'll split my screen here and I have a text editor on the left uh, hand side. And if everybody, if anybody's following along with a doc and you have a text editor, you're more than welcome to, to, um, to also build your own uh, playground. So the idea here, as I mentioned earlier, is that really anybody can build with Mapbox. So um, this is just some quick code that we put together. Um, we're not looking to build anything super optimized. And, and because at the end of the day, when somebody's learning, is either learning or trying to prototype quickly, uh, the idea is to, to really just build something as quick as possible and get that value as quick as possible uh, for you so that you understand that, hey, is this the prototype that I need or what do I need to change, et cetera. So diving in uh, here, we broke this into a few different steps and I'm starting to copy over the code. Um, so the first step is really to build the initial page and the project scaffolding. And this is HTML essentially that provides the project scaffolding. So I'm going to save that in as a lunchbox HTML file. And if I go here, there are the two vector tile files that I downloaded. Okay. All right. So when I save that, I'm, this is what I see, right? And this is basically, it's a blank page with kind of a side panel with some uh, toggles that I can toggle on and off. And these are going to be the toggles that will basically inform our API what it should retrieve. Then these will map exactly to the parameters of the API. So going back here to our document. So now that we have our scaffolding, the next thing that we want to do is instantiate the map. And I'm going to take this bit of code here. I'm gonna to go to the script section of the page and paste that in here. 
the quick format. There we go. So I'm setting up a few variables here just for my initial lat long. Um, what I need to have is, my, is the access token. Uh, also, when I instantiate the map, not just when I call APIs. And then um, what I'm doing next is instantiating a map object. So when I instantiate the map, I have various options. I can, uh, I'll pass the container where that map is located on the page, but then also I can choose to pass a specific style. I can choose to center it in a specific way and then uh, pass it a zoom uh, as well. So when I save that, and I'm gonna move this here, right over here, reload. You see that with just a few lines of code, I get a fully interactive map and I'm actually, I'm gonna pause here for a second because I know there's a little bit of lag over Twitch, but um, if you're doing this on your end, you'll you'll be able to appreciate how, how quick and, and smooth this map is. So basically just being able to zoom pan and kind of pitch the map, um, it renders very, very quickly. Hey, okay. Eric, for yes. folks that are new to Mapbox, where can they find the style and their token? Yeah, definitely. So uh, by signing up in um, as an account with uh, with Mapbox.com, they can go to Studio, and then in Studio there will be a style and the opportunity to add a token directly there. Awesome. So really, the best way is if you go to Studio.Mapbox.com. Great, and I think we're posting some documents as well. We also have another question. Um, is the Directions API only based on Mapbox's OSM road network, or can the user pass arbitrary network geometry? Right now is, um, is OSM. Another question, what is an object in JavaScript? Why would I use this method of insulating a map instead of an iframe? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, this is basically you're, you're, you're able to just create an object directly from our SDK, which is optimized so that you have everything within the div of the page. Um, in terms of why you would do it with an iframe, um, I don't personally um, have a lot of details around that, but I'm, I'd be happy to follow up if that's, a, if, that's um, if that helps. So we can make a note of that. Okay, any other questions? All right, so now that we have the uh, map object set up, I'm going to add some code here to basically start to add information to the map. And the first thing that I'm doing is I'm checking if the map has loaded. Uh, and then I want to add a couple of sources and sources are basically uh, containers for my data so that when I get the data back from the API or if I have any other specific data that I'm using, I can load it into a source and then that will show on the map. And the way that it shows on the map is through a layer. So sources and layer kind of go together because you need a way to contain that data. And, hey, and you also need, yes. Not to interrupt you, could you yes. bump up the text size on both of the windows? Yes, absolutely, thank you. Thank you. Right, you bet. And someone is also asking, can you use the Directions API with Mapbox GLJS? Yes, you can definitely use the Mapbox, the Directions API with GLJS. Awesome. Yeah, there's a Directions plugin that you can use and you can just with a couple lines of code, you can bring that in as well, and that will make things easier. So it will give you a couple of text boxes where you can um, you can put in coordinates. Uh, otherwise, just like we'll be doing here in this playground, you can see we're making the um, a call directly to the API, and then we're parsing that ourselves. Very good questions. Um, okay, so I hope everybody can see my screen here. Uh, let me expand this just a little bit. Okay, so I mentioned uh, sources. This is where we store the data that will be retrieved by the API. And then with the layer, 
these are basically the styling rules that we want to apply to the data when we have it. So even if our source gets updated with specific data, it doesn't show on the map until we add a layer and then we specify exactly how we want that data to show up. And layers can be of different types. They could be points, line, polygons, um, and there's other options. And then each one has a set of uh, properties that we can use to style this data. So for example, you could change the circle color, the circle opacity, the circle stroke color, uh, circle stroke width, etc. cetera. Uh, there's also options where you can, um, you can interact with events on the map. So for example, if you are uh, zooming, if the user is zooming in and out of the map, then you can choose how the, um, how the data appears differently in the map. So for example, line, you may still want it to show up uh, even when the zoom is very low and the person is zooming far away versus zooming right into it. So you want the width of that line to be proportional to the view of the map. So these are all options that you can, um, you can set up while you are um, either in studio as you are building the map there uh, through our point and clicks tool, or you can do that programmatically here client side. Okay, so now that we have basically set up our entire map the way that we want it, we're going to add a plugin, which is called GLDraw. GeoDraw is a great plugin that allows you essentially to draw uh, really anything on the map. So you can draw lines, points, polygons, uh, and this is uh, pre-built and you can just bring it in into your implementation and it will give you a, the, basically a control here on the upper right hand side, which I'll show you in a second. So if you keep your eyes, let me just say this, if you keep your eyes here on the upper right hand side, you should see a control up here. Okay, there it is. And this can have multiple options. In this case, I'm just using a line string, but this can be, uh, as I mentioned, polygon or other type. So basically when I click on there, it gives me the ability to add points that define a specific line. But right now it's not doing much more than that because we need to take those results and do something with it. Uh, but this is a great way to add this kind of functionality with literally just a few lines of code so that you don't have to uh, write your own. So moving on, uh, what we want to do next is essentially start to look at the really the, the logic of our playground. To comment here. Okay. So we want to start updating the line with the raw co coordinates that we are getting from the uh, GeoDraw tool. So I'm just gonna close that for a second. Okay. So essentially, as we get the data, we're going to take that data and um, set it to the, to the source. Um, eventually, what we want to do is, once we set the data for, for those points, then we want to feed, also feed those coordinates to our direction call, which we haven't built yet, and we're gonna build that next. So really the flow is, as a user, I'm just reloading my, application here as a user comes in here and clicks on the line string and starts to add points. When that user is done, what we want to do is store that data inside the source so that it's there, but then also take those data points and feed them to the API call so that we can start to get back the information that we need. Part of it's gonna be the geometry for the line that best matches the path. And then also um, uh, that's been calculated based on these parameters as well. And pause there for a second. Any other questions? Yeah. We have a question. Um, what are the differences between the Mapbox SDKs and APIs, which will help my app run fast and keep it a small file size? Yeah, great question. So um, definitely the, so the main difference is that the SDK is going to con contain all the tools that you need to develop your apps. It's gonna contain all the optimizations so that you can make sure that maps are rendering um, quickly. Um, it's gonna contain the rendering logic and everything else. APIs are really a way for you to access specific data from Mapbox. So let's say that you want the shape of an isochrone or you want the, the static image file that we were talking about earlier. You, you don't necessarily need an SDK. You could have it, you could use it, but you can make those calls separately. 
uh, but with an SDK, you get really all the benefits of optimization, um, fast rendering, um, and if you're building a more complex application, you are able to take advantage of all the methods that are already there and built for you, where you can just build something with really just a few lines of code versus building your own. You don't have to parse, uh, for example, all the API responses and check for errors from you know whether the API came back or, or it didn't come back, whether it came back with an error or the actual data. Etc. So um, definitely, if you're building something, you're going to want to start with the SDK, whether that is RGLGS for web or mobile for native or Android or iOS. Um, and then you can choose if you need to bring in additional APIs. OK, another question. Um, does the directions API have an option to pass in manual roadblocks that will be considered in the returned route? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so what we can do is, if, if it's okay, if we could table that and we can go and take a look at the documentation right after and we can see awesome. if, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Terrific. So, um, okay, so we've updated the line. Let me just go back here. Yep. Okay, we're going to create now a few variables. These are variables that will be used essentially to build our API call. So you, you can already see based on the pattern recognition that we we're doing earlier um, when we're taking our competitive, comparative approach, you can start to see the same exact building blocks um, here. So I'd like to uh, set those up first and then have some code here to make the directions call. And in, direct, in this uh, directions call, I have a couple of things. So I'm building out the query, and the query is, is the API call. Uh, I have a couple here just because since it's a playground, um, I wanted to uh, obfuscate, in that case, the access token. This was originally built for, for something else. You can choose to have that. You can choose not to have that, depending if, you, if it's something you want to build and then share, and you want to keep your access token or not. Um, and then really what we're doing, we are essentially Using Ajax, making a call. We're um, once we once we build our API call, um, we're making the call to that uh, API, and then based on what it returns, we are taking that data and we're setting that data to the source. And we have a couple of different sources. One of them is for the direction line, and that's going to be the one that uh, contains the geometry of the line that will show up on our um, for our route on our map. And save that. All right, so now let's go in and try our drawing tool and see what we get. And you can see that we, we get a route. So this is a route that is calculated based on these specific points. Um, I'm going to sort of refresh again so that we can maybe do another one. So I click here on the... And here we got a different route. So th there are a couple of things um, which we'll dive into, but um, basically you might see some differences here in the route geometry and that's by design for now. These are things that we can optimize for. Um, also, you notice that the points that I have selected and added to the map are not necessarily directly on the road. And that's part of the logic in the API. So that if you have somebody that is interacting with the map, they don't have to be super precise to click on the road and then these, um, these, uh, these points will be matched to the closest road and then the, uh, the route will be calculated based on that. So right now I'm getting a route, I'm able to visualize the points that I added through my drawing tools, but right now my controls are still not um, plugged in. And that's okay because that's exactly uh, what we should be doing next. Um, I'm also getting my API call request here. So I can take this and paste that. It's not gonna run because I don't have the token by design. Right, so we want to obfuscate. You can see here it says insert your Mapbox token here. Um, this is the actual call that uh, that we're we're making, just like before. So I could I could put in a token here, and this would would work um, just as well. 
And then here I'm getting the, um, down below I'm showing the actual JSON response. So this is the route object that returns with all its sub objects and additional information about the route that can be used. For example, it could be used with our navigation SDK if you're looking to do turn by turn navigation, or you can use on your own if you are building your own uh, application of sorts where you want folks to users to interact with the route, maybe show um, really any kind of information, whether that's traffic or speed or uh, speed limits or anything else. Okay. So moving on, the, the last part is really to add a few event listeners, um, just so we can interact with our um, with our side panel. And I'm going to do that right down here. So I'm not going to spend too much time here, but basically you can see that we're listening to events for specific um, controls, and then as they change, depending on what has changed, we are going to. Um, retrigger get directions so that we can get an updated value for that. Okay. All right. So here's my map. And just like before, I'm going to select a few points. There we go. You can see it's also very fast. I hope that's uh, coming across in, on Twitch. Um, but it's uh, if you're trying this on your end, you see that making that uh, request and getting data rendered on the map is super fast. So this is a pretty complex route that we calculated. Uh, takes into account all the uh, turn restrictions, everything that um, that you would expect to get a navigable uh, and accurate route. Um, and now our controls are also working. So for example, uh, um, I talked a little bit about earlier where you select the specific uh, or you pass specific coordinates and then the travel mode. Uh, now we can do that through the UI. And so as I change specific travel mode, you see that the route adapts. So whether I'm driving and taking into account traffic or driving without taking into account traffic, or cycling uh, or walking, then I will always get the most, um, the best possible route. Now you'll notice that the geometry right now doesn't necessarily match um, the road network, and that's okay because we are actually requesting simplified geometry. But if I were to switch that to full, then you see that it adjusts right away. And this is important because you may um, you may use a different parameter at different points of your application. So if you're showing something, for example, at this level, you don't necessarily need to retrieve all the coordinates and all the information uh, for a full route, but you can choose to, uh, to do so when you start to get into navigation mode and you want to show a route that is um, that literally matches the road so that you can navigate through. In addition, I can uh, retrieve additional metadata. So for example, I can get duration. Uh, this is gonna be duration of each uh, leg. I can get distance, I can get speed, uh, I can get congestion if there is any congestion. So for example, let's do driving with traffic. Then I should have congestion here somewhere. But so the, the, the bottom line is that I can yeah, get right here congestion. So you see um, low, moderate, etc. So the, the key here is that you can take this information and you can style the route line however you choose according to congestion. Uh, we have ways, and this goes back to using the SDK, this, we have ways in the SDK where you, we can do this automatically for you. So if you're building, um, whether it's a, a dispatch uh, app and you want to do congestion or you're building a turn by turn navigation, uh, a lot of this information um, can, be, can be already handled for you. Now, because uh, some of the routes can be pretty complicated and return a lot of coordinates, you also have the option to encode that data into a specific uh, polyline format so that you don't necessarily have to deal with the raw coordinates. Um, it lightens up your API response, makes it faster, and then you can just choose to uh, decode that on, um, on the other end before you, um, before you render it. So in a nutshell, um, I'm not sure how long this took us, but maybe 15, 15 minutes or so. But, but this is really one way that you can use the Mapbox SDK, in this case, GLGS, and interact directly with an API. We did this um, without the plugin so that 
it gives everybody a good sense of how you can build with the Mapbox API, and especially one that uh, at first sight can seem a bit more complex because it's a lot more soft, sophisticated. Taking a look at the uh, API response, so here's just a quick diagram, and there's really a lot more that we can get into, but um, the API response essentially returns the waypoint object. This is gonna include your input coordinates that are snapped to the road network, and this goes back to where the circles didn't quite align, but the API is able to uh, match those. It's going to include the name, the location, the distance. And then as part of the waypoint object, we're gonna have the route object, and then as part of that is a leg object, and the route step object. So think of the route object essentially the container for the entire route through multiple waypoints. It's going to have some um, information for the totality of the route. So for example, duration, distance, um, geometry, weight name, etc. cetera. Um, the route leg object uh, is a way for you to distinguish basically the segments between each waypoint. Um, and that is also going to have a list of steps. So that's a nested object but it's going to be able to provide distance and duration between waypoints, which is important whether you're calculating multiple waypoints, maybe for deliveries or for ride sharing, um, or maybe it's just a social navigation app, and that's perfectly great too. Um, for the route step object, then that is really where all the details are uh, in case you want to access those, for especially, especially for a um, for turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So this will contain information about each maneuver um, travel time and everything that you need. So from the maneuver um, type, the distance, the duration, the geometry, uh, and anything that you might need to render this information for somebody who's driving um, or really for any other use case. There are also objects for voice instruction for banner so that you can, um, you can take that voice instruction, for example, you can um, we already offer voice APIs that we integrate to, and we integrate it with uh, Amazon Poly. But if you were to use your own, you can definitely use that as well. We're, so this is yes. We're just about at time. We're right at time. Okay. Yeah, we have an outstanding question that I'd love to get to. Yeah, absolutely, and I think actually we're done. So this is the route object. Please. Erica, do you want to read it again? Yeah, happy to read it. So the question is, does the directions API have an option to pass in manual roadblocks that will be considered in the return route? Manual roadblocks. I think this was similar to the other question, yes. Um, so let's do this. Let's go and take a look. Oops. And for anybody who has to leave now, tweet your questions at Mapbox and somebody will reply. Thanks for joining us. So we can take a look here at our optional parameters. So we can definitely exclude the uh, certain road types, as we mentioned. Um, but I think in this case, we want to exclude a specific point coordinate. Is that correct? Let's go with yes, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be the concept of um, anti-waypoints. Um, I don't think we have anything right here, but we'd be happy to check and see if this is something that um, that maybe is part of other functionality. We can definitely follow up. Is there a way that we can get in touch with the person who's asking? I will give them my email um, and okay. they can definitely Fantastic. reach out. Okay, absolutely. That's great. All right, any other questions? This is more of a question for Dom, but what is the timeline for recordings being shared by email after registering for a session? Yes, 24 hours. We wrap great up here. Great SLA. Yep, and I just turned the recording right around, but you have to be registered. So go to mapbox.com slash webinars, and that includes registering for this webinar or any others in the future. We send the recordings right afterwards. Any last questions from the group? Thank you all so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Sorry I had to rush you at the end, but this was wonderful, Eric. No, we're done. This is great. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll do, we'll do the same with uh, two more folks next week. Same time, same place. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Bye, Thanks. Everyone.